Uh, what's up everyone, Daddy Robux here, and today we are continuing our playthrough of the Tomb of Annihilation. In our last couple sessions, uh, the party learned about the existence of the Death Curse and set out on an expedition into the jungles of Cholt in order to try and ascertain the source of the Death Curse and put an end to it. Uh, currently, Zolt is dying. I don't know if you've heard that yet. But he is dying, and he, uh, we are trying to rush and find this, this death curse as quickly as possible so that he doesn't die. And on our journey through the jungle, we have come to the ruins of the village of Mbala, where we have discovered a hag, one who is familiar with our party, and uh, has a ongoing deal with Gim. And because Gib uh, is indebted to her, she is willing to help the party in their quest to end the death curse because it would be most beneficial to her. And she has claimed that she has information that would be beneficial to the party, but before she relinquishes all this information, she wants the party to dispose of some terra folk that have set in on the cliffs near Rambal. And that is where we are picking up today. Uh, the party, after receiving all of the information, good and bad, from Nanny Poo Poo, uh, we are, she allowed you to take a rest inside the ruins of Mbala. There's a building around. Uh, you can deer one from uh, that was nearby. Uh, you take a long rest. And then it is morning of the following day. Um, you're far enough away from the hag that, that she's not gonna interfere with you. Um, and you have some time to discuss amongst yourselves, decide what you're gonna do for the day. And that uh, is I where we start. I approach Gib and I'm like, all right, Gib, um, I know you and I usually don't see you very much eye to eye most times, um, but I kinda wanna kill this woman and uh, I think you would be opposed to it. <laughs> Dad, thank you, you for the reset, so, man. She, Okay, what the fuck is going on? all about undeath, which I am not. So, uh, what do you feel, Thomas? Well, uh, 100% going to kill him. She, she's been dead, yes. So, let's just go over there? I mean, I think it's an ideal thing. Well, I, I don't think we should kill her right now. So she just killed literally all of me. You know, there was hundreds and hundreds of me over there. And she told them without breaking a sweat, we might run it around. Get well, a little stronger first. I feel like we're, we're strong enough. I mean, I don't think so, but, you know, if you start swinging, I'll start throwing these dagger figures. You know? Yeah, I'll go to the rest of the group. And... Alright, so, um, I don't want to do anything this woman wants us to do, because she's evil, or she seems evil. And, um, well, I feel like helping her is a bad idea. So, let's go kill her. Evil doesn't necessarily mean she has nothing to offer. As she said, she cannot take Gib's soul until this death curse business is taken care of. So she has no reason to give us false information. She's killed all of his tribesmen. And if she's dead, she can't take his soul. This seems like an ideal situation for us. So you're willing to not get the information about how to stop this curse that is killing our friend Zolt here. Zolt is, Zolt dying. is dying. Just to gain immediate satisfaction of killing her. Oh, I wouldn't have more satisfaction. Just myself wouldn't have. I'm sure Gib would have supreme satisfaction for ending this woman. Then why not end her later once we've taken what she knows? Because we'll be weaker. We'll have bought something. We will we will be whatever she wants us to go take care of will leave us worse off. We are fresh. It is a morning. We're all ready to go, fully full of vim and vigor. Why not just go and take care of it? Because if we take care of her in the same means, we will still be weakened for the day's travel into territory we know next to nothing about. Gib has his own paths that he's taken to get from where he lived to where he was, but 
we but have no heading as to we're not in the right spot we do have a heading we were supposed to go to the place near here we weren't supposed to actually come here remember she pointed out in the obelisk off to the east off to the west that's where we were supposed to go but we came here instead accidentally and so now we do her task for her even though we know we can go over there Remind me, did she ask us to do this task immediately or at some point? She actually didn't give you a time. It's been frame. several weeks and Candle does not remember. Yeah, she, well, so she actually didn't give you a time frame, right? She basically said, uh, you know, I have information. It would be useful to you, but first I want you to do this thing. Uh, and you know that where you currently are in Mbala, these terra folk that she once dealt with they are on the cliffs of Mbala, so they are very very near to where you are right now what do we know do we know anything about the terra folk you only know what she told you uh that these they are a a winged nuisance and that she wants them gone hmm. i don't feel like helping her I don't. I don't feel like helping her. She's, um... And we don't have to if you are so vehemently opposed to it. But we can't let her leave because once the death curse goes, she will have Gib's soul. We don't want that. I mean, Gib can be a little full of himself. Well, no, he's a lot full of himself. And that's fine. That's fine. That's who he is. He's not hiding who he is. But once we get rid of the death curse, she will kill, she will try and kill him. So we need to deal with her. And so we know where she is. We know where the threat is. Why not just go kill her? Why don't we do that after we get the information at least? I, mean, I feel like that makes the most sense, right? It seems like the person whose life is in danger is leaning more toward waiting, making a more informed decision, as opposed to acting out of a certain creed or inkling. I mean, if you guys want to wait, then by all means, we'll wait. But I just think this is a perfect opportunity. She thinks we're going and doing something for her. And in in essence, we could go back, well, we need more information. And ah, we get her. But if Gib (laughs) wants to wait and other people want to wait, well, then by all means, we'll wait. Um, Let me ask you a very fair question. She's lived here for years upon years. How do we know she's not listening to us right now? Oh, I would be. No, it's funny you mentioned that. Uh, because no sooner do the words pass through your lips than you see uh, something flutter in the, the corner of your vision. And as you turn, you can see uh, it's very unusual. Insects are not, not by any means an uncommon sight within the jungles of Chult. But as you say these words, a small swarm of them seems to lift off of a nearby windowsill in the r- room where you are staying and begin to fly towards uh, Nanny Poo Poo's hut. I immediately start flinging daggers at them. I'll stick or swing it. Sure. <laughs> sure. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I'm just standing there like... Hmm? <laughs> Dangerous. Yeah, let's just, uh, you guys fling spells and daggers, and uh, you're all skilled adventurers. We're just going to assume that you hit and kill the insects. Now what? <laughs> so I think we have two options. We either go and visit the pillar, or we deal with these terra folk. Why would she not allow us to even take a rest after we deal with the terra folk? I mean, we don't even have to come back here right after we kill them. That's also true. Is she going to come find us while we're resting on this? The terra folk are are just worth killing. I mean, we don't know anything about them other than what she said. Then let's go. Maybe we can can parlay with them in some way. I don't know if they're sentient beings or not. I don't know anything about them. Zolt think name. Terror folk. Terror. Ooh, scary. (laughs) Maybe bad. Is it terror? Or terrible. Terra folk. Yeah, it's kind of have... kind of iffy on the 
the you know she talks with that a thick accent so it's like maybe it was one it could be the other i don't know <laughs> okay. That's would, would i have knowledge of these people because uh, we're pretty close sure to history check why not sure of course with advantage you are a Shulton native so and you've done all the Yeah, that probably is the right term. <laughs> Advantage Uh Yes, Terra Folk. Uh, P T E R A F O L K. Terra Folk are uh, a humanoid species of Pteranodon like like uh, lizard. I guess. Reptile folk? Is that a. I'd... They're flying lizards, folk. We understand. Sounds spooky. They sound neat. Backup character ready to go. And would I know like their usual demeanor towards other creatures or not? Ah, yes, of course you would. Uh, terror folks, you know, are vicious scavengers. They often attack other animals and humanoids taking them up into the air and then dropping them to dash upon the rocks and then feasting on the smashed carcasses. Hmm. Would he I, know I relay they... that to everyone. Would, would uh, you... I, no. I think we should just tell them regardless to be honest. You know, if they speak, are they are they sentient enough that we can have communication? I mean, who really cares? They're jerks. Uh, okay. okay. You're a jerk. You were out. Whoa. <laughs> I was going to say anything, but, you know, yeah. Um, well, fine. Let's go see the Terra folk, I suppose. Since we don't want to deal with the, the witch who probably knows that we were plotting just moments ago. Oh, no. We told the barge. We should be fine. <laughs> I also feel like she would be under the assumption we're going to try to kill her anyway. But that's just me. All right. Um, well, let's lead the way, Mister uh, Mister Gibb. You you know uh, how to track these things, I'm sure, since you're from here. Give the guide. You're the guide, so uh, guide us towards where the, the terror folk are probably at. So you walk outside, and when you do, um, you can see that that nanny is slowly approaching your your house that you had chose to rest in and she's walking you know she's her figure is small and hunched over she's got her and she's walking very slowly and deliberately she finally reaches uh your group and says so what will the day bring for our group mind your business now dearie we're friends, are we not? Yes, big friends. And and Gib kind of just flashes his bracers with a bunch of daggers all over him. <laughs> um... <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> so I'm going to eyes the grave real fast. I believe you did that before. Uh, you've already discovered that she is not an undead. Right. Did she have any undead? Hmm. I'll tell you what. The range of that is 60 feet, right? Yes. So, let's say about 50 feet away, you do register uh, an undead. Except it's not coming from, you know, directly in front of you. You could tell it's coming from near her hut and under the ground. Okay. Uh, is you looking at her kind of funny and she gives you a little wink before turning to the rest of the group so these uh terra folk you'll find them on the northern side of the plateau which uh encompasses embala you can climb down the northern front and confront them at the mouth of their cave oh okay. nanny knows of a way in which you could use subterfuge to quickly assassinate all of the Terra folk.
Why not you do then? And you seem capable. Where's the fun in this? It is more pleasing to me to have underlings take care of my my assignments for me. Uh, I'm sorry, we are partners, not underlings. You would be my mindful of your language thank you yes you are partnered with life which i allow you to keep we are very thankful for your hospitality do you think if she provokes dangerous enough <laughs> she's about to provoke gib to be honest <laughs> I, I, I have gib light bringer in my hands. hands i have light bringer in my hands and i am holding it i go ahead and you know what i'm it, holding it it, it, um, it glows right like yeah, uh, I, I command it to glow. So she just kind of waves her hand dismissively, and she says, "Oh, stop it!" And it stopped glowing. Like it just. <laughs> <laughs> like there's even an audible powering. Dot. <laughs> we will handle them the way we want. And you will yes, say, of course. Right. I mean, you, you I are, know. you are welcome you, to you, have the free choice in the matter, but you see the well over here. And she points off in the distance and there's a, there's a well, like roughly centerish of Mbala. And she, she points, and she says, you see, there is a, a tunnel used to feed water up into the well, but it has since went dry. But I believe if you climb down the well, you can sneak your way into the caverns that make up the Terra Folk home. And then you can quickly and silently eliminate them. Of course, yes, you are free to choose. Free to choose. Yes. Well, you have things to do, so back to your hut, and I kind of chew her off. On your way, you know we don't. Uh, we'll, we'll figure out what we are going to do, and you can. Um, I don't. I don't know what you do in that hut over there, but go do it. I just dismissingly kind of wave my hand. Yes, yes, of course. I will be off. Uh, I appreciate that in your capable hands, this matter will be dealt with quickly. And she kind of gives a curt little wave and starts to walk away. Give me strength. Give me strength. Keep his gifts. Okay. All right. Well. Well, I don't know about you guys, but I'm pretty stealthy. But the rest of you, especially you, Mr. Dangerous, I, I feel like you might not be so, uh... Yeah, I, I do uh, stealth is not something I excel at. I am uh, quite loud, but I could stand further back in the group. Maybe that would offset if we were to go through this stealthy entrance. I don't know. Things echo pretty far in caves and wells and stuff like that. You know? Yes, I don't disagree with that. I mean... I don't have any coin. Now let's consider the following. If we go by the mountainside path, stealth or not, we will be vulnerable to one tactic they are quite fond of employing. Grab and drop. If we go by the cave entrance, even if we are the loudest bunch ever, we will not be able to drop off caves. Uh, they will not be able to drop us off of cliffs because there will be no cliffs at all. Yeah, but then they just leave and wait for us to go outside chasing them. Ah, yes. That is a point. Still, worst case, we fight them on the hill, but if we can manage to get up to them, that is practically superior, I would say. So I, I say, let's go to the caves. Um, I, I would agree with that. Uh, that so we should probably go through the caves. I wish to be dropped from uh, great heights. I would not... Uh, very well in that situation. And at that point, even if they run away, where to? We're in their house. And we would have done what she wanted. She wanted them taken care of. They wouldn't be there anymore for at least as long as we were there. They've gone. We've solved the problem. All right. That sounds like a plan. Let us proceed. 
How deep does this lovely well look? So approaching the well um, and looking down into the darkness, um, I would say the the depth of the well would extend beyond any of your dark visions, except for Zolt. Zolt. I have 120, if that matters. That does matter. Because uh, then Gib would also be able to see that the, the well goes down for about 100 feet into the rock. Uh, you can also see that the, you know, the well itself is about a a five foot, uh, a five foot diameter hole. So, walking down, um, the largest of you, thinking, brisk and dangerous, uh, would have trouble fitting down. It can be done. Uh, you would be squeezing while moving through this this narrow hole. Uh, but it would be certainly impossible while wearing heavy armor. Uh, does anyone have a spare set of, uh, like, leathers to be able to change into? Jeff, can't you do that thing where you make me go big mode, but opposite? Oh, yes, I can do that. Uh, yes, I could certainly... Well, dangerous, you go down the well, I could make you less dangerous, but more squeezable, as we say. If that would be agreeable to you. As long as it gets us down there in a efficient manner, I don't think I have an issue with it at all. Wonderful then. Okay, so we're going to cast Reduce on Dangerous? Yes. Okay, very good. Uh, with that being done, I think everybody can climb down the well, no problem. Uh, because it's such a, it's it's not a, a smooth, like, walled well, this is just a, a channel that's been cut and chipped away from the stone. So it's all very rough and uneven. Plenty of opportunities for handholds uh, to allow you to climb. So it's not even difficult enough to warrant a series of checks. Just if you can fit, we can start the descent down through the well. Which then will bring us right here. One moment. And we are on the right side of the map. Oh my God, snakes. <laughs> snakes. Um, and so as you climb down the well, we find the relevant information about the terraform. Yep. Uh, as you climb down, uh, you can hear a series of hissing coming from the bottom. You make it to the, the floor, um, you can see that you are in a very narrow passageway. It's only, again, uh, barely even five feet wide in some areas. Um, the, the larger of you will be squeezing again to exit here, but you can also very clearly see that it opens up into a larger chamber up ahead. Uh, there is no light down here, so I think... Let's see, dark vision, dark vision, dark vision, dark vision, dark vision. I think it's just Jeff. Jeff, can you see? Ah, <laughs> uh, Mr. Dangerous, could you put a light on me, please? Uh, sure, uh, I'll cast light on uh, Jeff's head. Okay. The, uh... right the back of his head. One of his hairs is glowing. <laughs> There you go. All right. Hopefully everybody's able to see. Uh, so then you can see also there's a large number of snakes on the floor of the cavern. Uh, they largely don't pay you any mind. More more so, they try to get out of your way as you try to walk through. And uh, coming from deeper inside the cave, you can hear um, several squawks and screeches of some kind of creature in the distance. Want to talk stealthier and more party of people go first, and us loud folk will um, bring up the rear. So I guess Gib would be up front, probably. Yeah. Yeah. Followed by Ersk. Do we think we'd be in combat within like uh, like an hour? 
I don't know. Do you think that? Well, we can hear the squawking. Does it sound like they're oh, relatively very close? Very, very close. Then, before, as Ursk walks by me, I'm going to go ahead and cast false light. Okay. okay. Mm. So, Let Ursk me. Will get Eighteen temporary hit. That is very, very good. Uh, while you guys are doing that, though, let me see here. Yeah, that's pretty good. You're not in any real danger. What are you talking about? All right, so Ursk, are you uh, leading the charge here? No, uh, Gib would be. All right, Gib. And Ursk would probably be right behind him. Um, I don't have vision on my token. Like me? I think that's because you're on a wall. That could be more right. than likely, yes. Yeah, you could just hold <laughs> alt and set yourself in the yep. middle. Oh. Yeah. Oh, there we go. Hey, uh, okay. Jeff. <laughs> yeah, a little too excited there because. Uh, oh as... shoot! Shoot! Yeah, as. I... You saw it, didn't you? As I did. You... Dang it. <laughs> so, so you guys just kind of barrel out into this main chamber. Uh, let's move Gibby out of the wall. We'll put you there. Uh, so Gibby moves forward, and right at the mouth of, of this this uh, crevice, uh, he immediately stops and throws his hands up. And Gib, you, you didn't say explicitly you were going to move stealthily, but I'm going to assume you did. Would you like to roll a stealth check? Yes, please. Okay. Okay. Fortunately, 8 is lower <laughs> than their passive perception of 12. <laughs> so, uh... Alright, well... <laughs> you guys are like, shh, we're going to move quietly. Thunk, thunk, thunk. And, uh, this... Terrafolk turns around, sees the light that has been cast on Jeff, and starts flapping their wings and screeching. And uh, why don't we just roll initiative? We've started off very well. <laughs> do you want me to go first, or do you want to now? So, well, considering you're in front of me, uh, you should probably go first. Okay, the dangerous Zolt, Terra folks with the 12. Alrighty then. Uh, so Glenn, you get to go first. Oh boy. Oh um, boy. <laughs> five, ten, is this like a, a drop this, of... It's just like a five foot punch, like there's really nothing to be alarmed of. 20. 25. Um, how far away is that? Okay. So it'll be a disadvantage, but two daggers. <laughs> well, hey, Roger. <laughs> Thank you for the resub. Appreciate that. I need to retune my settings. It's a little glitchy. Um, now hold on, because you have dark vision. I don't think that is reflected on your token. Yeah, that's, that's why I couldn't see earlier, I think. Let me fix that for you before you start walking out into that main chamber. You you good? I still can't see. Wait. I have updated your token. I can see when I look through your token. Yeah, no, it, it's just black right here. That's the light source outside the cave. So what you're what you're seeing is the light that has came in through the opening. But your token needs to be updated because uh, it's not reflecting that you have dark vision. So I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. No, god damn it. <laughs> we are going to just take this light source because now everybody can see. There's no reason to keep things oh. all boogered Hello. up. Yes, 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 yes. 
Okay, uh, let's go back a few steps. Okay. Wow. Um... Well, I gotta let everybody out. Um... <laughs> Five. I I gotta let everybody out, so I guess we'll go here, and we're going big mode. Okie dokie. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then um, two daggers at this one. Uh, first one hits, second misses. Okie doke. Any extra dice? Anything else I need to roll? Uh, the d6 from being big mode, so that's three extra. You passed your save, so no poison. Uh, second attack. One more dagger. Eleven misses, I think. Yep. Yep, and that's it. Okie doke. Button. Uh, it, Warbucks, did you see those messages? I did. Uh, oh. You don't have to use the spell. You're fine. All right. Uh, is there anyone in front of me? I can't tell. Space open. Okay. Uh, so, uh, to get to here is about 25 movement, I think, right? Go through two people. 10, 20, yeah. Okay, okay. Wow, there's a terror guy right there. That's not good. Uh, I'll move to there to, to be a safety valve. People's. Oh, that's not a good thing. Um, I'm going to cast uh, Spirit Guardians. Yeah, Spirit Guardians. That works. Guardians on me. That's what, a 10 foot radius, right? 15. 15. 15 foot radius. That's not worth it. There we go. So I have spirit guardians up. And, um. Oh no, the snakes! <laughs> they're all dead. <laughs> no, uh, no other bow factions or anything like that. I guess I am finished. Okie doke. Wait, were the, are the snakes dead? Because they didn't seem that hostile. No, well, it, fine, right? Spirit Guardians does isn't hostile creatures. It's creatures you choose are not affected by it. So unless he mm. chose all the snakes, which I don't think he you could, because there's there's a limit. The yeah, I, like you can only choose what people up to your casting mod. Um, it doesn't matter. Guardian? All the snakes. Ah, yeah. <laughs> not well, the snakes. Would I be able to push Rohan like the five feet further down just so that I don't have to like go around him? If they're, if they're willing. Rohan, Rohan can, can I push, I you? push you? Sure. I push him five feet next. So he's beside Jeff. Okay. We all need to go, but we all need to go. So that's well, all my movement. Sure. And I'm going to use my turn to cast Bless on myself. I can't see Dangerous, so we'll do Ursk and we'll do Rohan. You got it. And then uh, token mod. And we are hashtag blessed. Yes. Got it. Okay, so now it is the different folks' turn. And uh, you know, this guy as uh I'm gonna assume it's a lady because they're they're currently sitting on a nest. Uh she is you know, she was alerted to you all. They're the one that kind of sounded the alarm, so now the whole terra folk nest is uh they're they're ready to rock and roll right and we're going to this one's just gonna come right up right right up there nice and cozy um uh, what is their speed 60 feet holy wow yep uh Could so I... we're just gonna oh, near God. near near at least they can't get to everyone else right you you would <laughs> you would think that but <laughs> But they have tricks. It's almost like uh, this encounter was designed with that factoid in mind. Because, uh, Terra Folk, here we go. Uh, let's uh, see. Save. They have flyby. Ah. Save on this one, I think. And then, of course, the one that came next to me. 
That's a uh, wisdom, right? Yes. Two. Is their token size correct? And they are actually they are large one. creatures. Yes. First save, second fails. Just use the damage above. So seven for one and fourteen for the other. Seven for the we, first one. Yes. Got first it, one. Got yeah. It, got it, got it, got it. And fourteen on this one. Okay. Now, do you want me to link the scary part? Sure. Hit me with it. See what you got. The terror folk makes three attacks on its turn. Oh Sweet. my god. <laughs> it's a little not quite that. Right. So uh as they all run forward, you see some of them have it's actually not javelin. It's rock. Rocks, not javelins. Oh so, no, so. not the rocks. I'm I'm Shelton all over again in that doorway. <laughs> okay, here we go. So uh, this one here in the front it can only reach Ursk, so it's going to make three attacks. One bite, two claw. You mean me, dangerous. That's what I, that's, that's what I totally said. Uh, yeah. Looks like... Uh, the claw hits. A hit with a claw for five slash. Okay, let me make a con save for you. Yeah. I don't think you even have to. Isn't your mod like four? What? Oh, shit! <laughs> uh, oh, no. <laughs> God damn, this is not going to be a good day, is it? No, I'm not. I'm not. That, that, that does five. Yeah, okay, good. Great. Five damage. All right. Wouldn't it only be... Would you need ten? Right, anyway. What? I would need a ten to save. It didn't roll a ten, so... Okay. So, yeah, can you remove the word then? Uh, this one up here in the corner... All right, let's just go right to the left. So, one, two, three, four. They're all going to bite and claw and gib. Uh, shh. Hit. I want to do them. Let's do them one at a time. Bite, claw, claw. We have one hit. It hits you for eight and then makes a con save because it, it bit the frog. I don't think that, that's very... Uh, what's the save against poison? Twelve. Yeah, DC 12. So, it's poison now. Nice. <laughs> Boop. Uh, next one. Bite misses. Claw, claw. 17 misses, right? No, it hits. That's it's, my AC. Take another four. Uh, why not? We already started this mess. Uh, number three. Bite. Claw, claw. Misses. Number four. Bite. Claw. Claw. 17. Hit the three uh, and a con save. I'm sorry, did you have a reaction? No, I was gonna, but I'm like, you know what, I'll save it. It's fine. Yeah, I still got one, two, three, four more attacks. So they are going to the four in the back, they're they're all just gonna start picking up rocks and chucking them. Uh and let's 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 spread the love. I it sucks because only two people have taken their turn. Uh let's throw rocks at Ursk. Yeah, yeah, and then we're gonna throw rocks at Gib again. Yeah, and more. Okay. Oh, we got a twenty-one. It's for nine bludgeoning. Okay, that one I'm gonna redirect to this top one. No, to this one. This one. Now we talked about this before. Because is it when you see it's a hit, or or when you receive the damage? When I see that it's a hit. Yeah. So when it's a twenty-one, no, no it's um, like it, it doesn't matter. Here, I'll I'll relink it for you. Like the the full effects of the attack would go to the other person. Yes, but just yeah, just link it, please. Yeah, I'll link it again as soon as I find it. While they link that, and we debate where nine damage is going, Earth, you can take your turn. Okay, so Ursk first is going to get very upset. Uh, that will be uh, him manifesting with a tail. Mm -hmm. Oh, why can't I not? Uh, it don't matter. Anyway, Ursk is raging. He will step to... Well, before he steps... Uh, will the 9 damage possibly kill this one? Because it would change his action. Yeah, so I'm pretty sure this is the same thing I said before. When a creature is hit by an attack roll, that would be 
before the damage is assigned. Because it's to hit roll, then any 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 responses, damage roll. So just in the future, um, I'll try to be more cognizant to give you a break. That way you have the opportunity to use it. You have to use okay. it before you see the damage. But we're going to redirect right. it to just another guy, right? Uh, this back one over here. All right, you got it. Wait, this one up here in the back. Yep. Well, that would kill it. Okay. You said this is a drop? It's only five feet. It's, it's just a step. Five feet. Okay, well then, Ursk will swing his battle axe. Uh, okay, that is a dead terrible. He'll step to here and then swing again. For, uh, yeah. Or eight, and then that will end his turn. Okay. All right, Rohan. Alrighty then. Let's go ahead and. Where did it go? It's hiding from me. There it is. We'll make our way out. 15. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Peter is dying. <laughs> Thank you for the resub, Zach. Appreciate you very much. There. I think that's the farthest I can get. So, as our bonus action, we'll go ahead and spend a key point to summon up our dragon arms as our astral self and within 10 feet of me. So yeah, need these two to make me some deck saves or take some force damage, hooray. You have dragon hands, that's awesome. Yeah, I got them dragon hands. All right, what is the DC? Uh, my DC is my Monk DC, wherever it has gone. It has been too many weeks. Oh no. My DC is 15. Okay, great. So they both fail. All right. So that'll be seven force to the both of them. And then we're going to start doing some punches. First, we'll punch at the one directly in front of me. Where is it? Here it is. That's definitely a hit. We'll take 11 damage. And because we haven't done the monk thing, and I like seeing people suffer, can he make a con save for me? Uh, I could. Yay, my first stun of the campaign. Ooh. And then we'll use our second action, not second action, second attack to punch. 14 is also a hit. Delightful. Can he also make a con save? Unfortunate. I will be done. Great. Right. Jeff. Excellent. Jeff shall first and foremost get out of the darkness and sees what is going on. Quite a few pair of folks surrounding fellows. Well, he has trained for many weeks before setting out to Chult to throw daggers, but he was kind of sucky at it. The thing he was less sucky at was throwing slingshots. So he's going to try to do exactly that. He's going to use one of his new level 6 features from having trained so much under the tutelage of Gib that he spends a bardic inspiration point and very temporarily gains extra attack and the archery fighting stuff. And he will 
shoot his slingshot using a second hand to recharge it at this one over there, trying to not hurt Gib in the process. It will be first attack, which is going to be a miss, and then a second attack, which might be a hit. That is a hit. That is a hit. Very good. Following up, after bonking it in the head, he will look at Gib and he will say, and say, your daggers will pierce through their ugly heads. He will bardingly inspire Gib, which uh, you can see has a few uses. You can use any of these uses, of course. I shall click the button. Okay. Uh, what? Okay. Um. We're going to stab the stunned guy down here. I actually get to use the plus one dagger for once. Um, here we go. It's too valuable to throw. I know, it is. <laughs> 13 is a hit. Right, you have advantage ten. also if you wanted the fish. But it doesn't matter because 10 will kill it. <laughs> All right. And then the second swing at this one. Uh, also a hit and a dead terror folk. Okay, and then second attack. 12 is exactly their AC. So that is also a hit. And then the poison. That uh, can. No poison. And then the D6 from me being big boy. Stop it. Just stop it. <laughs> You know what? No, we're gonna action surge. Hiya! Uh, another dead terror folk. And then we're gonna move over here and attack again. Uh, and a hit. Con save. And you pass. That's it. Butter. Thank you. Well, these things seem to be, uh, we're, you know, group seems to be mopping the floor with them, so I'm going to kind of hold back on anything big at this point and move to here. Uh, there's some dead folk over there. That's so sad. Uh, the one that Gib just hit, I'm going to go ahead and toll the dead. Of course. Of course. And, um, yeah. Yeah, that'll be it for me. Uh, well, no, wait. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, I keep forgetting I have this thing. Uh, for the fun of it, I'm going to use a bonus action to inspire Gib with my little crown. I look at Gib and I'm like, use that anger, Gib. And you have an additional D6 you can use for a ability check, attack roll, or saving throw. Nice. Double bardic. <laughs> They're distinctly different properties, so they can function together. <laughs> Zolt. Zolt. Zolt is moving. I got a guy. So I have hearing lots of really cool things, but I don't know. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, there's a bunch of duders, I guess. I'm going to go over behind Dangerous and I guess just start doing work on these things i guess start the farthest one and i throw result bolts at him sure hit uh okay and then that and then again the same one i'm assuming he's not dead hit or 20 total maybe, maybe now he's dead no. oh and Close. then that's that's Zolt's turn all right uh care folks made it to round two let me see here. Uh, so this one here, is gonna fly into the air, and uh, while it's flying, I mean nobody else would be in in range except for Gibby. Gibby is large, so as he flies overhead, he would pass within your reach if you would like to take a swipe at him. I, uh, yeah. 
Ooh, that's a swipe you did. Does the poison apply to that as well? It's whenever you make an attack with a piercing weapon, isn't it? Oh, crap, I got hit with the poison. Okay, uh, I think it's a d6. Yeah. There you go. All right, all right. I think I just minus nine instead of three. Put that back. All right. Minus... Oh, I'm sorry, it's 2d4. I apologize. Poison? Yes. Okay. Uh, so we have four Terra Folk remaining. We have this one here who just flew into the back chamber. And we are going to attack uh, left to right. Why not? So we're going to bite dangerous. Ooh. Ooh. I'm going to cancel that. Oh, that's right. You're a freaking you're a party pooper cleric. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I so can... you take nine. <laughs> take nine. Okay. Uh, and then we're going to claw Zolt. Yes. And claw at Jeff. Yeah, do it again. Do it again. <laughs> but he took less damage than I did for my regular hits. Yes, he did. <laughs> but still. <it's... laughs> All right. Uh, then we let's go over here. The one attacking Rohan. Fight. That looks like a hit, unless you have a reaction that I don't know. Wait, wait. The sun one died. Rip. Okay, uh, yeah. Bite for 21 is 7 damage. Miss, and... Then we have two uh, in melee engagement with Gibby. Bite. Claw. Claw, there's a hit. Yep, it hits. No reaction? Okie doke. Oh. Uh, for four. You take that four. And then number two? Bite. 18, I believe, is a hit. Does it do the poison thing since it clawed me? Not sure. It's poison. Don't oh, no. know. 18 hits, by the way. Okay. If it's poisoned, it does have disadvantage on that attack. This is a different creature. Never mind. Because <laughs> it's Bite Claw Claw, so that was the third attack of the second Terrible. And then the first Bite has hit Gibby, resulting in six damage and another con save. Resulting in it being poisoned as well. <laughs> I hate you. Alright, so let's... <laughs> Disadvantage. Don't touch the frog. 17, you got it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> For six. And damn. A little better with poison. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Uh, that's all the Terra folk. So Ursk. Ursk will step to here. First swing on this one. Yep, that's a hit. It's dead. It, I don't think it literally could survive through your mods. First, we'll step to here, and this one. Okay. Eleven uh, is a miss. Yeah, oh, a miss. Oh, let's oh, well, miss. Uh, Kendall, can you put yourself on push to talk? I, I think that echo is coming through your mic. I am on push to talk. And where did the echo come from? Uh, anyway, so that's a hit for nine. The aimed. Okay, and then Rohan. Okay, we will move on over here and begin punching things. It's a good song. I like that song. I don't like it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the 11 is off. Oh, no, wait. That counted your blessed, didn't it? Yeah. Okay. So the 11 is a miss. But 6 will hit. And then we will... Uh, no, I'll just do one more. And then hit. For 10. For 10. He's hanging in there. I don't like it. <laughs> I will just be here menacingly and be done. Already. Yeah. 
He looks at the fellow over there, and he takes his newly acquired loot, since his first one got destroyed a few sessions ago, and he goes, ding, 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 hey, hey folk, leave us folks alone, bam. He will, as an action, cast it under will on the fellow. Try to repel him and squash him against the wall. I'm just gonna uh, assume must... you step here yes. so we don't. <laughs> All right. All right. So, Thunder Wave, a con save from our Terra Folk, and he gets a. Uh, well, he's taking 10. And. Very good. Let's just. um. He... Now, there's a wall here, but there is an opening right next to it. So, let's just say it slams him into the wall. And then he kind of diagonal out. That makes sense. Uh, following it, I will look at dangers. Actually, he probably will do all the deads and all that. We'll look at. Uh, no, I don't think. But that would be my turn. Goodbye. Okay. All right, here comes the whirlwind. Hi, yeah, at the poisoned one right here. It is dead. It had one hit point. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Second one at this one. Uh, 21 is a hit, and 9. And then... The poison? That's it, the poison, but it takes 2d6, because you're big, or 1d6, I don't know. Uh, 1d6. Some kind of dice. 2. Um, and then second attack. Third attack? Yeah, third. Well, first attack, bonus action, then second attack. Okay. 12 is a hit. Can he get above an 8? I can. That is a bit terrible. And that is Gibbs' turn. Okay, dangerous. You're muted, buddy. All right, um, I am not muted anymore. Thank goodness. Uh, I'm going to bring out my little bell, like, uh, you know, desk bell, ringing a few times. As I told the dead. He failed. So the roll that damage. Five is the magic number. And that'll be it. So it clutches its head as the, the ringing... Uh, causes it immense pain uh, as it falls you see it outstretch its hand towards the nest it had been previously guarding and it falls over dead ending combat well that was um something gib looking all scratched up and a little bloody I hate those stupid birds yeah well it would be nice to not have to fight them, but uh, now, what happened, what happened, so we're over. Do we know if this is the only nest, or if there are many? Uh, I don't see any way you could know that. But I mean, this is where Nanny told you to go. This must be the place. While still in big mode, Gib is going to eat these eggs. Oh, uh, okay. Gulp. So then um, when you shrink to your normal size, it'll just crack in your stomach. <laughs> it doesn't I don't sound know how that'll work. It doesn't sound pleasant. <laughs> yeah. Uh, um I guess I'm gonna search these bodies over here. They look like they're bodies of people they've they've been snacking on. Maybe they got some good stuff on them. Oh, yes. Uh when you search the northern end of the cavern, you find what you have correctly guessed to be uh, the corpses of several adventurers that they had collected. There is a, an orc and a human. Uh, the orc is dressed in what at one point was probably chain armor, but it's been decimated by terrible claws and teeth. And uh, the human's clothes are more uh, more fine. They look to be the clothes of an entertainer of some sort. Uh, searching through the bodies, you don't find anything of value, but leaning nearby, you see a blood-stained pack. Uh, and a loot, haphazardly against the wall. Loot. 
Uh, I hand it over to uh, our resident entertainer. Uh, here is a loot for you, Jeff. Oh no, why did you do that? I hope you enjoy it. Uh, maybe it's, I don't know if it is as good as the one you just recently acquired, but maybe it's something good. I don't, I don't know. Well, it certainly appears to be made of mahogany wood. That is quite, quite fine quality loot right there. Interesting. Bling, bling, bling. It is already well accorded. Would jolly sure. good. Excellent. All right. Uh, Jeff, as you, as you pluck at the strings of this loot, a very odd, a, a very odd thing occurs. You can see that the music notes seem to create an illusory burst of colors. You pluck a string, you just, just a brief flash, purple, green, red. It's obvious something is unusual about this instrument. Well, okay. Hey. This, this will make people taste a rainbow. Well, in an auditory fashion, of course, but my goodness, I don't even know if I'm worthy of such an instrument, but I will cherish it, that's for sure. Thank you. Hey, it's what was on the wall here as I'm touching Gibbs' armor to try and give him a little help. I have a um, question. I have an uh, answer. Like a game mechanics question. Yes. Is there any reason why I can't twin cast uh, a touch spell cure wounds? No. No, that's something you can do as long as you can okay. touch both targets. Okay. That That's what I'm going to do right now. I'm going to twin cast cure wounds on Dangerous and Gib. Yeah. Okay. At level two. So left to right. I'm gonna take 14, thank you. Yeah. No, thank you. No, I'm not quite so bloody. So, what do we do now? I'm checking out the pack, if we have not already. Oh, the pack. Yes, of course. How could you uh, not check out the pack? The pack seems to be... Uh... I had notes. Where'd they go? Oh no, I closed them! Not smart. Uh, the pack seems to be an explorer's pack. And uh, the items inside, just for, you know, just for the sake of expediency, I will copy and paste. Uh, they have, you know, things that could be useful. There's also like, 10 gold pieces kind of floating around in the bottom of the pack. Uh, and Contained within the backpack is also a set of bracers. They seem to be composed of what looks like a copperish colored metal. Um, and the metal is woven in intricate designs that kind of go from the forearm to the wrist. Oh, now these are just lovely. And there's food. Uh, food food skin, is important. <laughs> Yes, the bracers and the food are of equal importance. How you doing, Henry? Like Death, I welcome. Come on. And I will take the rations and divvy them out to those who should want them. Um, it doesn't look like there's any, any dirt. Do you think maybe we could uh, pile some rocks on the bodies to sort of... Uh, makeshift burial are there enough rocks in the area we might be able to do that with it. lots of rocks they were throwing them at you yes so i would probably i would take my time to, to at least bury that word uh, mm. with rocks. there is a nice five foot ditch here good for burying uh, sure i guess i could move them there and and bury the the work okay Sure. It wouldn't take uh, too long, I suppose, either. Just to, to get everything situated and uh, have the bodies removed. Sure. That gets them both rights, and then uh, I'm ready to go. 
Now, this was relatively easy compared to our capabilities. So I believe that if we are to return to Nanipupu, she might tell us a bit of information, but expect us to do yet another task for her, a greater challenge. I could be wrong, though, so let's find out. Okay. Do we want to go by where we came, or do we want to go around on the ledge? Well, descending that shaft was difficult. You getting up that shaft might be a gruesome experience. I would recommend going down by the mountainside. All right, well, I'll make my way out to the mountainside. Does it look like a, an easy traverse, or are we... Well, it's a funny thing you ask. When you walk out and, and kind of peer out at the Cholton jungle through this cave, um, you can see there's a couple things that you had not previously accounted for. One is that it is easily a thousand feet from where you are to the jungle floor. Two, the rock cliff seems to be very sheer. It doesn't look like it would be something simple to climb. And three, there is uh, strong winds that are pressing upon the face of the rock here, which might make climbing a little difficult. Hmm. Oh. Um, well, this, uh, I'm not the best climber, so I don't know how I would fare against the, the winds such as these. So maybe we just have to suck it up and go back through the, the well. I'm going to go back and climb the well. I'm going to walk yes. back to climb the well. Second account, I do agree with you. I'll recast light on them just in case we throw. I will Gib will re remind me, you shrink at some point, right? I don't think at this time you would be able to fit through the well. I should have shrunk by now. It's been a minute or however long. Oh, um, while ah. we're walking over, I'm actually going to search the nest. Is there anything interesting in the nest? Uh, Well, it's... now that the eggs have been consumed, no, there is not. Oh, okay. There's another nest, or uh, first There's point to in. another nest in the south. Oh, okay. Let's go down to that one. Is there anything down at this one? Actually, or yes. Either. As you, as well, as Gib had, was too large to fit down this corridor before. <laughs> uh, when you look at these nests, there are still eggs present. Uh, and you can see that one of them is shaking oh so slightly. Okay. It's shaking. Um, so I think a terror folk is about to hatch. Good. Um, well, if it is to hatch, it will be without family. Yeah, I don't know how it will take care of itself, and I, I, I don't know how to take care of the terror folk. Well, I'll try to give it some of this. You're going to eat it? Oh. No, I... Uh... No. No. All right. Well, go have at it, Gib. Uh, anything else of interest in these nests besides the eggs? Uh, no. Kind of searching right. through the the straw and hay. Uh, in addition to uh, the one that is currently hatching, there are two other eggs still down here. Uh, Gibby, as you reach down and kind of pick up this egg, it's you know it's it's not very large. Um, we'll say the egg is about the size of like a cantaloupe, right? So, so any of the huge, any of the medium-sized creatures could probably hold it in one hand. Uh, but Gibby's got to hold it too because he's little. Uh, and as you're holding it, you know you see a little beak start to peck through the shell, and you hear a little <laughs> as a little terrible head pop through the shell. Gib, who was originally licking his lips, kind of thinks this thing is a little cute now. So he's not going to eat it just yet. As uh, its head kind of pokes through, you can see its little its little clawed wings like scraping at the shell 
as it tries to free itself from the egg. I'll help it just a little bit. Okay. And as you do, it kind of it pushes the tiniest little hands through, and it starts grabbing at the edge of the shell as it pulls itself up. And it is, it's so small. It is so small. Uh, even compared to Gibby, who is in itself quite large. Well, it hatched, and to, to be honest, it's kind of true. Well, um, if you're going to keep a pet, you uh, might want to find a way to carry it where you don't poison its death. Oh, that's, that's a good idea. Will, will it fit, like, in my backpack? Absolutely. All right. It, well, it's yeah. it's very small and fragile. It just hatched. So I mean, putting him in your backpack, it might get jostled about. Could I hold the baby like in the crook of my arm, like while I climb up? Sure, sure, sure. All right, we're gonna do that, but we're gonna like take the blanket from my pack and so that he's not touching my bare arm. All right, so we take the, the blanket, we drape it over our shoulder and arm, and we kind of set him in it, and he starts to scuttle up to your shoulder and kind of lays there on his belly, gripping onto the blanket. Has it to you? This is so cute. I'm so happy right now. Should we take the other two eggs with us? Well, you can if you want to. Hmm. Ah, very well. Uh, I, will, I will pick up the other two eggs. My my astro alarms last for 10 minutes, so I'll just use those to climb. To hold them so you can climb up with your actual arms? Or vice versa, yes. Yeah, I, would, no, I was going to say, I would do it the other way. Hold the eggs with your real arms and use the arms that don't get tired to climb. <laughs> anyway, so we're going to climb back up to Mbala. Yep. Sure. Yeah. All right, let, let's go here. I'm going to put you back on this map. Because there is no real emblem. I want to go there, too. So, we climb back up. We exit at the mouth of the well. And as you, you ascend this 100-foot, you know, chasm, uh, when you reach the surface, you see that Nanny is standing there, leaning on her cane. So, tell me, how did it go? Unexpected. We did slay the terrible, but we did find that they had some babies. And we rescued one of them. Ah, I see. And she points to it. On Gibby's shoulder. Yes, this runs mine. Taking it as a pet, have you? Rosie, I might eat it later, but what? for right now it's pretty cute. What is its name? Um. And and Gib kind of thinks for a minute, and he's just gonna say Mini. Mini. Well, I feel it necessary to remind you of our agreement. If you expect any information on the source of the death curse, then you were to exterminate all of the Terra folk. I'm afraid you said to take care of them, not exterminate. You need to be more clear with your words. You didn't say kill all of them. It is on, the burden is on you to insert what it is that Nanny wants. Take care of means that the, the issue has been taken care of. The Terra folk are more down there. Well, this one is coming we'll give you nothing there. until so, you take your friend and dash it upon the rocks. We're, we're not going to do that. And Gib is going to walk over to Dangerous and just Do you have that thing that makes people look dead? Thing that makes people look dead. Yes. Without actually telling them. Uh. Don't believe so. Oh darn it! 
Well, uh, it seems we have entered a tough dilemma. I'm gonna do another uh, Zolt is dying. Why not kill stupid I'm gonna bird? I'm Eyes of the Grave. Uh, Eyes of the Grave reveals the same information as before. There is a single undead about 50 feet away under the ground. Gotcha. Gotcha. All right. So, Gib, one thing to realize, very sadly, that this Terrafolk might need milk of his mother in order to survive its infancy. Milk which we do not have access to. We do not know how to feed him. What kind of lizards make milk? Birds don't have milk, especially yeah, not baby. lizard birds. <laughs> so, I, I think we'll be okay just giving it some, you know, some meat, because that's what they eat. Zolt can give Zolt Bolt, so Zolt can know how not to die. Zolt is dying, why care, stupid bird? I'm, I'm gonna be honest here, Zolt, the bird is cuter than you are. Bird not friend, we just killed <laughs> bird entire Zolt. family. Appreciate that. B bird is friend now. Yo, yeah, okay, you gonna tell Bird we killed Bird family? Gib is his family now. Well, Gib I'd like got. I'd like to point out, you didn't just kill their family. You also ate several of the eggs, right? <laughs> yeah, but but they weren't they weren't alive. This one's alive, and it's kind of cute. Well, Gib got his tribe killed and killed his adoptive pet's family. I mean, that's par for the course, right? Gib shrugs. See. Well, if, uh, we've accomplished the goal you asked, you tasked us with, Manny. So, it's time for you to come clean and tell us the information that you want. And if I may say, no Terra folk are left down in that cavern. They won't be bothering you again. I feel that's overall what you wanted from us. Manny does not, not negotiate with terrorists. You will fulfill the terms of our agreement. Take it. Put it on the ground. Flat. Then you can have the information that you seek. Otherwise, I will return to my home. Toodles. And she makes a big showy, like, mocking, you know, turns around and starts to walk away. I wonder if he knows he's muted. Son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I did not know. Okay, so she's she she says, I, I will not negotiate with terrorists. You will do as I have requested. Take it, put it on the ground and stomp it flat. When I hear its bones crackle, then I will give you the information you seek. Otherwise, and she makes a big showy display of turning around and starting to walk towards the hut. What do you see? I'm not, I'm not killing not. this thing. No, I'm I saying don't care if we get the information or not. How, how about that conversation we were having earlier? Uh, I'm down, I'm for, down that. for that. I feel like at this point, it's just the correct option. Um, Listen, I have done some atrocious me. things for this lady, okay? <laughs> this stops now! We might as well roll initiative, because I'm going to send the guiding bolt right now. Alright. <laughs> before the... before yeah. we go into this course of action, I feel it is my responsibility to ask, are you sure? I thought I was going to die in a month. I guess I'm going to die right now. Oh, I used action I, She is unwilling to compromise. I mean, we've done what she asked. She wants stupid rock bird. More to for a, a <laughs> that lizard bird to kill the stupid thing. The Gib loves. She killed his entire tribe, man. Come on, have you a just know what he's feeling right now. His entire tribe died. I have nothing he's anymore. He's dealing with trauma. This is not he's real. No okay. way. No way. He's not emotionally stable right now. He ate his his chieftain. <laughs> oh, what if we take a short rest and then we kill her? <laughs> that, that's a good idea. I agree with that. <laughs> uh, you go back in your hut and we'll go over here and I'll think about it. She gives you a playful little wave. No. <laughs> you 
I should have known. <laughs> As soon as I made it cute and something you would I, want I to knew keep, it something happened. bad was coming. I knew it. Oh my god. <laughs> All right, so short rest. We're going to return to our hut where we where we camped out the night before. And uh, yeah, she she doesn't uh, view you guys as a threat, as an enemy. So, so uh, you know, you're welcome to, to kind of camp out and take a rest and deliberate if this is truly what you'd like to do. Two. Do, do we still have those eggs? Yeah. Does it, does it sound like there's anything inside the eggs that uh, might not have hatched yet? Uh... Don't know. I'm not sound sure like I don't. I don't know what an egg. I mean, I can. Like. I can give like, them a like gentle shake. shake you, but... yeah. You're supposed to like put put them in front of like a light, to see if you can see inside of it. We Wait, could do light. that. <laughs> Dangerous light, light spell. I cast light on something so we can look through. It. All right, and you look inside, and yes, both eggs are fertilized. There are baby Terra folks in there, waiting to be hatched. I don't care about the ones that haven't really hatched. So Gibbs plan at the moment is to open one and then kill that one in front of her. <laughs> I only care about the one that's already hatched, okay? <laughs> this is horrible. <laughs> You did, did this. this. You did this. You did this. Do you think if there's any of those bugs looking at us like before? Hmm. Well, I mean, there's certainly bugs present, right? Like that's not. It's chalk. Can you tell if they're agents of the hag? I don't know. <laughs> Perception, maybe. Ooh, that's really good. Okay, uh, so you you make sure to do a thorough check, right? Looking for anything out of place, and uh, before you you start your conversations of deception and and killing eggs and not other ones, whatever, uh, you find it looks like a bag, right? It's uh it's small, about the size of an acorn. But it's made out of some leathery material uh, that looks to be beige in color, except coated with dirt and filth. Um, and it's wrapped in what looks like parts of human hair. Andy, he's chilling at the bottom of the mountain. Oh, wait, no. He spider climbed oh, up the mountain, didn't he? Yeah. He's right up there. He's right there. It's... <laughs> so I found a bag that has hair on it. Um, this is weird. I guess. does it seem magical. I mean, it it's definitely not naturally occurring. Man, if only we had some useful wizard that was uh, in our party. It's too bad that they're gone. Um, I mean, we have a sorcerer, a bard. There are arcane casters. All right, well, I'll just, I, I found this bag. I don't, I guess I just smash it. Okay. Uh, smashing it, you you see that there is a splatter of what, see, it looks like the bag was filled with blood and uh, and it smells horrible. But at the time that you smash it, even though what, what looks like the bag seems to be made of leather, the inside seems to be like meat and, 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 and detritus, uh, but when you smash it, there's sparks. And you can't re come up with a reasonable answer as to why it did. It, so obviously there is some kind of magical presence on the bag that has been destroyed. Okay. Oh, so kill yeah. bag, okay, not kill bird. Okay. They chuck it over my shoulder. I don't know what that was. But on now. Um, Listen, not, not all of us are heartless robots, we're told. Zalt have heart. Zalt dying, though. I would like to keep heart. Right, yes, we can try. 
We'll try your deception, Gib, but uh, everyone be ready to just wreck this lady. <laughs> are, are we okay. taking a short rest before we try this deception? Yeah. 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 That was never a question. You guys will complete your short rest. I throw up a curtain in front of Gib. <laughs> what the hell, guys? And during the short rest, Jeff would like to do one thing. He'd like to cast speak with animals and ask Andy for some advice. And he explains the situation to Andy. Like, not if you understand kind of deal. He says, if you were the subject of Nanny Poo Poo's ire, that she would tell us you must kill Andy in order for... No kill Andy. Of course not. So what do you think about this bird? Should we should we prioritize his life over information about this this death curse killing millions? Nanny kill Andy? Oh no, the bird. She she wants us to kill the bird. No Rather kill Andy. Mission. Of course not. This bird mini. Uh oh, mini. Andy, Andy, mini. Uh starts shaking his head again. No kill Andy. Of course not. You're very precious to us, Andy. What do you think about Minnie? Nanny kill Minnie? He wants us to do it. But no kill Andy. Oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what do you but think no about kill Andy. That's what he thinks. That's oh. <laughs> He's got animal level intelligence. <laughs> Very good. Uh, I'm to still to uh, so basically, he. Andy wants to live. <laughs> as long as Andy lives, he's cool. <laughs> well, at the end of the conversation, and it's nearing the 10 minutes, it says, Andy, I'm still glad I had this conversation with you. You are a valuable member of our party. Andy want food. I can't believe I'm relating more to the mount than the rest of the party right now. <laughs> it's kind of fucked up. <laughs> I mean, you are a robot. It makes it hard to relate. <laughs> And I want him yeah, to live yeah. as much as everyone. He's my best friend, but I mean, well, obviously not. You don't want to kill the stupid bird. Try. <laughs> we met this bird. Go. And uh, <laughs> yeah, we we anything. met the bird minutes ago. I've been we've been on adventures. <laughs> I only just met this bird, but if I anything happened to him, I would kill everyone in this room and then myself. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so um, let's try and see if your deception will work. So, just so we're clear, we are going to forcibly remove one of the, the Terra Folk babies from an egg, and then drape it on our shoulder as if it was Minnie, which would probably kill it outright. And then we're going to take it to Nanny and agree to, to do what she asked. Yeah, specifically was to put it on the ground and stomp on it until it crackle. That's exactly what Gib is going to do. Okay, okay. While, while hiding Minnie. Oh, yes, of course. <laughs> leave Minnie in the house. Leave I feel like we just leave Minnie in, in the curtains. Yeah, yeah. We, we, we leave Minnie real far away, hidden. All right. All right. <laughs> I, okay. Uh... <laughs> Are we ready? Yes, yeah. I suppose we are. All right, so uh, Nanny is in her hut. Right? So we will have to go to her hut in order to, to speak with her. Um, as we approach her hut, you can see a number of creatures in the sky up above. And... As you approach, you can see that there is easily maybe there there's easily a dozen of them. Right? And some of them kind of swoop down and land on Nanny's hut. And as they, they land, they kind of sit and, and stare at you and with and with seemingly an intelligence that doesn't really fit their animal exterior so that so you're walking inside um 
dangerous, you would know that somewhere right around where you're standing is where that, that undead is buried. Because um, you, you have to walk that distance to the hut. And as you uh, approach, Nanny opens the door and stands in the threshold. Have we decided? I've decided that I hate you, but we need your stupid information from your stupid mouth, so take your stupid bird. And then he throws it on the ground and stomps on it. Excellent. You know, I could care less if the Terra folk lived or died. Oh, trust me, I know. The real payoff for me was in your suffering. <laughs> So, sh shall we? And she uh, starts walking down the steps of the hut. And uh, there's a small fire pit with several logs that have been laid out as uh, benches nearby. She gestures. Sit. Sit. No thanks, I'll stop. How about you just give us the information so we can leave? Oh, I will surely do this. But it is a long tale, and Nanny is old. I must sit and rest my bones. Everything you do is torture, I swear to God. <laughs> I'll stand, I'm fine. I stand like ten feet back from the cat fire. Anyone else uh, going to accept the seat? Uh, I'll just go ahead and... Assumedly, after we get this information, after you spin this lovely tale for us, we'll be on our way. Would you mind if I readied our lovely friend Andy in our vehicle so that we can be out of your hair as soon as possible once we're done here? She kind of wait, dismisses you with a wave. Many thanks. And Jester cautiously sits on one of the logs. Hmm. <laughs> She kind of sits, still leaning forward in their seat, putting her weight on the cane as he stares at the rest of the group. How much fun has this been? Oh, I can tell. We will enjoy each other's company for many years to come. Zalt not have many years. Oh. Zalt is dying. You'll be fine. Trust me, either you will die here in Chult, or we will succeed on our mission, and then you'll be in service to old Nanny for a long, long time. I am... Um... Ooh, that sounds like a threat, Nanny. Um, you, uh, just tell us what you want to tell us your tale, and we'll be on our way. Yes, yes. I am old. My mind is scattered, so sometimes it is hard to order things into a, a reasonable way that would make sense. Tell me, how many of you are familiar with a creature called a lich? A what? Um, I don't know. Am I, I don't know. I, you're an un expert on undead, aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> uh, undead. So, uh, I've heard of it. In, uh, sure. I've heard of a particular kind of lich called a yeah. Koronak. It is a, a bard lich. Quite fascinating, really. No. What's a, li what's a lich? Well, a lich uh, is the byproduct of powerful and very, very evil magics. It is when a, a wizard becomes so fraught with the idea of his own passing that they undergo a ritual to make themselves an undead, an immortal creature that could never pass. They retain all their magical knowledge and become one of the most fierce things to walk they room. Among lichdom, there is a 
a being, particularly powerful being, and his name is Atzerak. Yes, Atzerak is a powerful lich known and feared throughout the multiverse. Do I know? Probably not. Much of his past has been forgotten. Ancient texts assert he came from a world called Earth. Atzerak has transcended even lichdom, becoming what is called an arch lich. He travels the planes of existence, searching for strange and wondrous, wondrous treasure and power. When he finds something useful or interesting, he locks it away in a dungeon of his own creation and design, meant to protect his most valuable treasures. Although Aserak is believed to be powerful enough to pursue godhood, as other liches have been wont to do, he has no interest in becoming worshipped. He prefers instead to create evil gods and unleash them upon mortals and immortal creatures that would dare oppose him. Many of the lesser creatures of Faerun have forgotten his name, but he is a creature of extreme power that even gods have right to fear. Yes. Okay. Is he the one in taking care of this curse? Well, you see, Atherak is known to have lived here many, many years ago. He once visited the realm of Jolt, and he waged war against some of the Jolten natives and their gods. So long ago that history has since forgotten. But it's believed he did so because there is a vault containing Asterak's treasure somewhere in the Chilton Peninsula. Now, I believe that given the creature's power and his ability to amass such powerful and strange artifacts from all across the multiverse, that maybe this vault is the source of the deathers. Yes. And where do you believe that vault might be? <laughs> I have no idea. I told you I do not know the, the source of the curse, but I had information that could help you in your pursuit. I believe without a doubt that the rack is the cause behind it. But as to the where, your guess is as good as Granny's. Yes, sir, quite helpful, thank you. And give rolls his eyes. Well, truly, yes. Now we know the perpetrator of what is afflicting our friend who is, as you know, dying. <laughs> so, we do know of a of an oracle, a wise one, and our Lunga. Perhaps they know of the source. Once we do know that information one way or another, you can rest assured, Nani Poo Poo, we will go there and we will cut the cord on what has been going on. She smiles. The Oracle of Oralunga, huh? You wish to see the Oracle of Oralunga. It is our best lead at this moment in time. It is a myth. It does not exist. What? Aye. The Oracle had been destroyed centuries ago. One of the fallen gods to Aserak's wrath. Nothing remains except a monument to its demise. Then how can we find a source? Oh, well, now that you ask, I mean, Nenny could provide this for you. 
But I, if I were to commune with higher beings to try and find uh, a divine creature who could guide us to Asarak's tomb, well, I would need some equivalent gift from the party. Well, I only have one soul, so you know, that's off the table. I mean, um, I'm still up for going to Orlongu because, uh, no offense, Nani, but um, I don't trust you at all. So um, I think it might be worth our time to go and check it out because, um, yeah, I mean, why would we trust the word coming out of our mouth? Have I lied to you yet? Nanny may be many things, but I have been truthful in every interaction I have had with you. It does have a point. I'd rather go check it out. We might as well. Well, we don't know how far it is, and that could be a big journey for poor old dying Zolt over here. So how about... Actually, on that, on that point... You remember when you're standing on the plateau of Mbala, you can actually see uh, Oralunga off in the distance. And if we were to use our handy dandy eyeball, we can estimate it to be about 60 miles. Uh, let's say this we will go to Oralunga because even if the oracle is dead, as Nani Puku says, perhaps they have left notes before their demise that could be crucial in our quest. Or, yes. Zolt could just offer his soul, because if we fail, he's dead anyway, so... Man as well, right? No. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> is it truly it a isn't. soul you're requesting, Nanny Poo Poo? Zolt, how do you feel about going to Oralunga? Zolt, okay with it? Seems like a good idea. Uh, Jeff did kill a man for the information, so <laughs> you may <laughs> as well. Time. Do not kill this man. If you accuse me once again of this falsehood, I will leave you. Nanny's uh this whole time, right? Every time you've spoken with her, her her demeanor has been like this playful, mocking, like very, very um you know, almost like she she's playfully teasing you, right? But when you bring up this man that told you to go to Oralunga, her demeanor becomes immediately very serious, and she's scowling. What man? Who told you these things? Some guy that Jeff killed. Well, that's our business, isn't it? Not yours, Nanny. It is my last warning. Next time someone accuses me of having killed this man, <laughs> I am leaving you forever. <laughs> All right, good luck going through the jungle yourself, murderer. Look, we've all killed people. It's fine. We don't judge you for that. We just carved up a bunch of lizards. Gib killed like a dozen people today. <laughs> I do not like to be falsely accused of things. The things I do, I do them. But I do not do that thing. Okay, euthanize him. Whatever. But he's dead now. It doesn't matter. Might not even be dead. He just collapsed. Perhaps he had a bit of a heart. I don't know. I still so alive. you gave him a heart attack. Okay. What did this man look like? Why do why why are we telling you this? This we're not. How this about... is part of the negotiation. Nanny is the only ally you have in the jungle. Ally is a strong word. Okay. You do very, the thing very... for us, and we tell you about this guy. That seems fair. Yeah, it seems like a fair trade. I like Gibbs' ideas. Makes sense. You going to assist us? Tell us, you know, summon your gods or whomever and try and get the information. And we can... Uh, you disregard that man. Uh, the, the path he set you on can only lead to your destruction. This will Zolta. benefit none of us. Zalt already on a path of destruction. Zalt's okay with going. Why does she keep saying us? That's so weird. Do you think it's weird? Well, I mean, she, she benefits from you guys not dying because Gib is indebted to her. That's the whole reason she's helping you. Remember?
She said it like a million times. Yes, no, <laughs> she wants that. to. She wants to make good on that promise. I'll take that as a no to our deal about telling you about this dude. I have already told you what is required. If you would like me to commune with Miracle, then I require something else. Who's Miracle? Do we know? Well, yeah. The Lord of Bones. God of death and undead. <laughs> I don't want his help. <laughs> I don't want his help. Um, I'm gonna... I, I, Ah, no, I'm done. I'm done. I'm, I'm completely checked out on this. Like, we're gonna go to, I'm gonna go to Erlanga. If you guys want to come with me, that's great. I don't want to listen to anything else this, this uh, undead worshipping hag has to say. I say that in so many words. Let me give you a gift. I don't want anything from she you at all. turns around, reaches down, and she pulls up uh, a small disc it seems to be uh made of clay and it's got bone set into the front of it and a skull in the center take this shield with you it will protect you from the dangers to come and should you need it you can speak to me here and she points to the skull Better take that because if I grab it, I'm gonna fling it off the top of this place. <laughs> <laughs> Just Captain America throw it off the edge of Mambala. Yes, it's this is what no, not at all. I, I, I think you're the only one that uses a shield, but I mean, if you think first kind of hefts his shield and looks at it, then looks back at hers, and he just keeps he keeps holding his shield and. Mm -mm. Yeah, it's not just bad new shields, all that need. Oh, thank you. Your gifts come with too many strings. No. Well, this shield I... is enchanted by me, myself. It will oh, protect you far it. better than any other implement you were carrying. I just equip my shield that has the big symbol of the gatekeepers on the front of it and just kind of hold it in front of myself. Like, this is where I stand, and I'm not moving. All right, well, I'll take the stupid shield, but I'm not going to use it, just in case one of you idiots decides to use it later. No, I'm good. Her her gifts have too many strings attached. I'm, I'm fine. You, it's all you get. Yes, it's, it's always on me. I'll, I'll take every gift this stupid hag has to <laughs> offer, I guess, whatever. I tell you to give <laughs> her soul to her earlier. Did we, did we say that? Did we say you should give her your soul? Yes. On the other continent? Yes. I no, remember that. No, we didn't. You did that freely. Um, no, no, you told me to do it. I remember. <laughs> Zalt was dead. Zalt had nothing to do with it. And I mean, I didn't even go in to meet her, so. Uh, if we could recap real quick. So, Gibby gave up his soul to, to, you know, work with the hag so that you guys could earn the res to bring back Zolt, right? And now that Zolt is dying, and he's already indebted to the hag, he's just like, <laughs> oh well. <laughs> Ursk doesn't know the details because he couldn't go in. That's right. You were too afraid. Yep. And Zolt was dead, so Zolt had nothing to do with it. I didn't All tell right, him well, to do well, I guess we're going to this stupid Oralunga place, whatever. Give me the stupid shield, and he takes it and, like, puts it across his back or whatever, like slings it i guess sure and and uh so you're looking at nanny right she's still hunched over putting her weight on the cane her lips do not move but from the soul in the shield you hear her voice well then i shall see you all some other time oh jesus never mind take it back i don't want to hear your <laughs> stupid voice all the time <laughs> uh. does he say that out loud Yes. <laughs> uh, you, there are always strings attached here. You should probably leave the, leave the shield. Yeah, but... I don't know. It could be useful. Yes. All these other gifts I've gotten so far have been fairly useful. Like the gift of eating your chieftain? 
Yeah, but now I can do this thing. Oh, wait, no, I'm not going to actually do it. And he went to go raise his hand and then changed his mind. So are we leaving? Yeah, Gibbs going to take the shield and well, I'm good to leave. Very soon or I want to be uh, bringing us all in combat. Okay. So you, you walk away. She doesn't stop you. She doesn't say anything else about the shield you left behind either. No, he took it. Okay. Uh, you go back to where... Rohan and I'm presuming Jeff and Andy are and uh, collect your things and get ready to leave still think we should just go kill her but if we don't want to do that I can understand that uh, we start attacking our stuff get ready to go okay oh, stuff's already packed that is what Rohan did good let's get the hell out of here um, somebody want to do the spider climb on Andy, uh, the, the staff again? Yep, yep. Zulp can do. Alright, so let's go. Oh, R Rohan, here's this awesome shield. You should, uh, carry it, you know? <laughs> Monks can't use shields. I would, but that would make me incredibly less effective, and I don't uh, think you want that. Yeah. Zulp can carry shield. I don't. No one should want that shield. Zalt not use. Zalt can carry shield. And he reaches oh. over to, to Gib, try and see if he'll pass it over to him. No, that's okay, Zalt. I'll try that. I can at least use it if I absolutely need to. How big is the shield compared to Gib? Like, it's, it's a smaller shield. You know, think okay. like a buckler. So, probably normal size for them. All right, uh, disembarking from Mbala, uh, I had already rolled for random encounters for today because I figured things would be running long, and I actually whiffed on both rolls. It was a very sad time for me. Um, if we want to head straight to Mbala, we would be able to reach it. Uh, well, are we traveling at a regular pace, fast pace? You want to do a force march? How long do you want to make this take? Remind me what the travel distance rules are. <laughs> uh, did I put it on this map? I did not put it on this map. It's, uh... It's, I think it's... Didn't we say it was two squares if we fast pace? Two squares a day at a fast march. pace. Yeah. Um, Force march, we don't rest and just keep going. Yeah, so there would be four squares. That doesn't sound right. I thought it was three squares at a fast pace. God damn it, I wrote it somewhere. But who, who the hell knows where that is? Anywho. Um, I'm pretty sure it was like uh, two, three squares at a fast pace. And then six at a forced. I'll, I'll have to find it. Now let's, I want to do, a, we want to get there as soon as we can, so, uh, do we want to do a forced? I'm down for forced. Okay, okay. I say we at least force the first day, yeah. Sure, sure. Sure. Two hexes per day, if they're traveling by, no, one hex per day on foot. Uh, but we, we did more than that. If characters move at a fast pace, Easiest way to deal with the progress is to roll. Yeah, we we did away with the rolling. So I think uh, Gib was right. It was two hexes at a fast pace, but then you have the disadvantages of not being able to forage, sell, um, disadvantage on perception, and then Force March was four hexes in a day. Yeah. And then we, if it... Oh, go ahead. No, no, that was it. If it matters, Gib now has the alert feat. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> Because there's no encounters! Uh, so there's... There is one whole day of traveling. We are not resting because we're force marching, correct? Correct. Yeah. I need a, a round of con saves from everybody. DC 10 on the first. Well, 
level exhaustion. Oh, oh my oh, gosh, guys. <laughs> Jeff, you did it. I'm so proud of you. <laughs> oh, Jeff. Jesus, one, two, three. All right. So now, uh, second day, um, there's no need to, to force march because even moving at a fast pace, that will have us arrive at Orolunga. Yes. Click that little tile. Good, great, wonderful. So, Let, so how is Mini during all this, by the way? Uh, they they just kind of lay there and make cooing noises. They, they squeak when you uh, give them little bugs to eat. Oh, it's so cute. <laughs> All right, uh, notes, 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 locations. Yeah. Uh, as you travel, you find a massive... A moment. I can't believe I don't have one for this. Uh, you find that a massive brick and stone ziggurat rises above the jungle. As you stand at the base, you can see there are two staircases that angle up and across the front face. One from the right, one from the left. They meet at a landing at about 30 feet up above your heads. As you continue to look up, you can see that the layout repeats. Two staircases, one on the left, one on the right, go up to another landing, about 30 feet above that, 60 feet from the ground. And it continues and in, and continues. You can see that the walls of the ziggurat are uh, adorned with indecisive crystals. And that uh, the jungle has encroached on this structure. The steps are choked with creeping vines, tree roots and flowering uh, vines. Uh, it might have been surrounded by a city long ago, but the jungle is so dense here that it would take hours of searching to find those foundations. The only thing left remaining is the stone obelisk and the jungle vines that have enc enclosed it. Suppose we should walk up it? Yes? No? I mean... You did come here for a reason, right? Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, let's start walking up it. All right, so as you begin to climb, uh, remember the vines are very, very dense here. And as you try to move through them, uh, no matter what you do, let's just assume that you start using your weapons to try and hack through the vines. Uh, you use spells to burn them away, but no matter how much you cut and hack, they immediately regrow and entangle themselves in each other, creating an impenetrable wall. Hmm. Maybe Jeff can walk through, because Jeff was chosen. He did speak to you, so maybe. No. You were the one who was given the sign, so it makes sense that you're the one who would be able to traverse. So, the vines seem to be blocking our path. Mm -hmm. So, Jeff will cast a certain spell to try to communicate with the plants. I will post the spell, but it's more over the last portion of it that matters. I will still click on it to discuss. It is called Speak with Plants, but the part that really matters is this. So Jeff wants to communicate with the vines as if they share a common tongue. It doesn't provide control over them. Absolutely. But 
The spell fails. As just with all the other spells that try to destroy the vines, uh, any time you, you, any of you cast a spell on these vines, you just see uh, they change in color, seeming to absorb the magic. And as you speak and try to communicate with the vines that are blocking your path, there is no reply. Do they appear to look physically different after he casts the magic? Yes, they seem to change in color, absorbing the magic, and then returning to their natural color. Um, what would happen if I cast the spell magic on the on the plants? Would that find out? Would find out. <laughs> right. I will cast the spell magic. Right. On... They again. Uh, you see them glow in color as the spell is curled towards them, and then the spell seems to be absorbed into the roots, and then they return to their normal color. That's, um, weird. Um, does anyone have the ability to fly? Can we fly over this? Maybe to get the blue red, red, red I'm just going to climb it. Ha! Huh? Here, so here's something, well, you're climbing the vines? Uh... Hmm. Let's see. I'll go ahead and... Use two key points. I'll pop out my arms, but this time I'll also pop out my uh, visage of the astral self. Basically, this like draconic-looking helm, and I'll touch the vines with my astral arms to see what happens before I start climbing the vines themselves. So, touching them with your astral arms, you see again they kind of change a color. As they're uh, interacting with the magic of your your astral self. Um, you also see that when they are grabbed, there are a number of thorns that immediately spring into existence. They don't hurt you because it's not your physical hand, but you can see it almost like as it tries to defend itself against being grabbed. Ah. Well, there are trees around. Let's climb those. Absolutely. So you start climbing up the tree? I will attempt to climb a tree, yes. Okay. So uh, as you climb, you jump up, you grab the tree, and you start trying to hoist yourself up. You pull one hand in o over the other, moving up five, ten feet at a time. And you can feel yourself ascending, right? You're pulling. You go higher. You pull, and you go higher. And then you look back down to see how far you've traveled, and you're only five feet above the ground. You, you can see him climbing, but he doesn't move. He seems to stay suspended in one place. Oh. Well, there's got to be something here. Um, we wouldn't come and be sent here for no reason. Jeff, did the man you spoke with, did he do or say anything else other than come here and, and visit the Oracle? Well, did... I'm trying to remember what exactly he said. Perhaps if I repeat what he said or paraphrase, it might work. Before we tried that, perhaps another idea it seems to be a barrier preventing all sorts of magic as well as physical things, but perhaps if we overload it, perhaps if we continually hack at it, throw spells at it, perhaps there's a limit to what it can absorb. I don't know. Uh, Alright, well, I'll just... Um... I'll go to this, the bottom of the steps, the ziggurat, and look around from right to left. Kind of, uh, what's going on? Like, uh, Oracle? Is there an Oracle here? Kind of loudly proclaim looking for an Oracle. There's no reply. Yeah. And... Did, the, did the dude say any kind of a name or anything like that? 
mention the wise guardian of Aralunga, that it is a she. But further than that, no. Perhaps... Hmm. Maybe we're going at this the wrong way, literally. We could try circling the perimeter, seeing if there's some gap in these vines. Yes. We do have some time left in the day. Let's proceed with that. Okay. Uh, you circle around the perimeter of the uh, cigarette, and you come full circle. Other than the stairs, there doesn't seem to be any other way to ascend. Oh, wait, there are stairs? If the planes are blocking the stairs. Ah. Well, we'll try to just repeat what the, the man said. I want to speak with the wise guardian of Aralunga, west of Imbala. She can direct you to that which we seek. Then Jeff tries to move forward. Uh, the vines still block your path. And uh, as you make contact with them, the first of, of the thorns is going to appear and poke you for one piercing. Um, I'll maybe try this. Um, a wise and great guardian of Orlunga. We are looking for information on the demi demi lich. Is that the right word? No, arch lich, arch lich, Asarak. If you could please point us in the right direction, it would be greatly appreciated. Hello. You hear Hello. a sound coming from behind you. Oh, good. It sounds uh. It, it, it distinct the the sound of, of laughter, but it's very quiet and it's very very high pitched. It's almost like the tinkling of a bell, um, and it's very small. You just hear. Hee -hee. Awesome. Um, I'll turn around and try and find the source of the, uh, the laughter. Standing about five feet from you, there is a creature. It's about a foot tall. Um, its body seems to be made of this black ethereal substance uh, that coalesces around its head in this wispy hair-like like structure. It wears a white mask of what appears to be bone or porcelain. And the mask has three little protrusions, two at the top of the head, one in the center. Having seen a triceratops, you recognize that the mask is of a triceratops. And uh, the little creature, as you turn in and wheel around and look at it, puts its hand up to its face where its mouth would be. And again, he. Well, hello there, little one. Uh, can you help us find the guardian of war? We're looking for uh, ways to stop this curse. And uh, we were told this might be a place where we could get direction. It points to the stairs. Yes, they're blocked. We can't get past them. Um, they uh, they are impeding our approach. It points to the stairs again. Can you can you show me how to get past that? It points to the stairs. All right, I, I'll just start walking towards the stairs. Maybe this, something has changed. The vines move and block your passage. Okay, and then I turn back to it. See, here's the problem. I can't. It, it, it's blocking us from going. Can you can you help get them out of the way? It would be greatly appreciated. The creature. You see its hand, and he kind of takes it and places it behind its back. And then it brings it back in front of it. And what in his hand now is a flower. It's orange and purple. It looks like an orchid. And as it holds this flower, it, it starts to leap and bound towards the steps. As it does, vines part 
allowing it to pass and shaping around it as then it disappears into the mass of vines. Okay, do we see any of those flowers anywhere around us? In your immediate vicinity, no. But you know that you've seen them in your travels. Hmm. Well, uh, I think we're going to need to get some flowers. Uh, so let's spread out and try and find the flowers that we uh, found our way here, and uh, hopefully those will be uh, the solution. Okay, um, so searching the surrounding area for these orchids, um, if you are proficient in the nature skill, you find them. Automatically, you, you find one. Is there anybody that is proficient in nature? Nobody? Serious? Okay. If you are not proficient in nature, then you get to make a nature check. And if you beat the DC of 15, then you get to find a flower. All right, I'm going to give myself guidance. Sure. Like nature. Okay. I guess I don't need it. All right, so so Blood Dragon and Dangerous return single orchid in their hand. And uh, <laughs> the majority of the group didn't have any luck. Um, Three, four, five. Yeah, who didn't roll? Yeah, Zolt, Rohan, it's Ersk. Ersk. You have Uh, Might be dead. <laughs> he hasn't moved. Oh, he's, <laughs> he's, he's turned into the Zolt. <laughs> All right, so we have six people and two flowers. So we can continue searching again. Uh, however, if you have already found a flower, I will tell you it's the supernatural properties involved. You are unable to find a second. Uh, okay. So if you do not have a flower, you can make a second nature check with disadvantage, as oh, it is harder I'll to give, find. I'll give Zolt guy. Okay. Zolt can guide himself, but yeah, that's, that's All right, okay. well, then I'll give Rohan guidance. And I will right, so give Jeff, Bardic Zolt, and... Rohan, Earth, uh, make a nature check with disadvantage with Bardic and guidance and everything else. Yeah, basic of three of them. Okay. That's 15 plus. 15's the DC. So Earth found a flower, Zolt found a flower. No, he didn't. He's disadvantaged, doesn't he? Oh, shoot. You're right. Uh, All right. There. There we go. All right. So, after our second round of searching, it looks like we have three who are, are worthy enough to have the flower to enter and, and will enter. Dangerous and Gibby. What could go wrong? <laughs> um, I will give my flower to Jeff. Like, you were the one who spoke with this, uh, I don't know, disciple of the Oracle. Maybe you're the chosen one. So you, you seem like you would go ahead and uh, I'll just kind of wait out here uh, for um, you guys to get back. Ersk will offer his flower if anyone wants to take it. You should probably I mean, go up and go with the table. Um, you're a big, beefy person. Jeff might need the protection, so why don't you go with it? Yeah, and if someone gets a fatal cut, they might need you to stitch them up. Jeff can heal things. <laughs> He's healed people before. So, so, go ahead. Three flowers. Who wants to go? It looks like Rohan wanted to go. Jeff is being voluntold he has to go. Uh, and then who else? Gib is not giving up his flower. Right, so Gib, it is. Sound good with everybody? Rohan wants to go? I believe so. Yeah. Um, Ersk will hand his flower to Rohan. Cool. All right. So Gib, Jeff, and Rohan, you take your flowers, you approach the steps, and the vines part to allow you to pass. up to the second uh the the second landing now 60 feet above the forest floor 
you can see that there is a second set of stairs that are again enclosed in vines. There are uh, the, the gold and red orchids lying everywhere on the ground around you. And among them, there are also a number of red feathers that look like uh, from like a macaw. Hmm. Oh, Hen, do you believe it would be a good idea to pick one of these lying red feathers, or at the contrary, to leave them alone? Gib's gonna pick I was, one up. I was just having that same thought. Yes, I think it would be good to take a feather. Let's take one each. Perhaps that is in line with the previous challenge. We should be one with nature. Are there any more steps? Yes. So, uh, approaching the second flight of steps, you see the vines again part to allow you passage. As they move out of the way, you can see the stairs are in disarray. There are large gaps, some 30 feet in stretch. And it is impossible to walk up these stairs as they are crumbling and you would fall to your doom. Perhaps these feathers might provide us the power of a bird, if for a brief instant. I don't know. I mean, if you want to try that out, be my guest, but that seems a little far-fetched to me. understand. Then again, this place is testing us. We'll make what is to be called a leap of faith. Ed Feather, I am holding on to you, dear life. I believe you can grant me passage to the higher step. Let's see. And Jeff takes a deep breath. He will. His might that the feather will swoop him up from the gaping hole towards the next step. And that's exactly what happens. As just as his foot leaves the stone step, you see, it's almost like he is taken up by a gust of wind and he gracefully drifts from one landing to the next. I did not know that would work. <sighs> Gib kind of blinks like 20 times as quickly as possible in disbelief. He's like, whatever I guess, I've seen some weird stuff. This is just another thing on that list. And then he also tries to jump with the feather. And Likewise. same as before. And you gracefully float to the next landing. Look at me, I'm a dragon. <laughs> as you land on the next step, uh, what you see in front of you is just as alarming. Once again, there is a third landing. And uh, on the other side of the landing is a series of steps that are enclosed with thorns and vines. But on the landing in front of you are swarms of snakes. They are piled at least four feet high as they slither and intertwine with each other. Hmm. We'll try something. He will just speak with animals and he says, Snakes, can you understand? And snakes me? glow blue brightly and before the spell is absorbed and dissipates. Come on. Hello, fellas. Eben, Rohan, we have a flower. It is my belief that somehow perhaps the vines or the snakes are related to this flower. What do you think? Perhaps we could look for another of those cute little masked people. Maybe they have the answer. Perception! Okay. That's pretty good. Uh, as you look around, you can see there is another Twinga standing here. 
They are at the base of the steps in front of you. The mask resembles that of some kind of, of uh, mammal with very sharp teeth and large, elongated ears. Uh, at the bottom step, you can see the Twinga picks up its flower. And then, in, in a very swift motion, it pops one of the snakes on the head. And then he does it two more times. And you see the snake stops moving. He didn't whack it hard. I mean, he's he's smacking him with a feather, right? He just pop, pop, pop. And then the snake stops moving. And the Twinga picks it up. And he holds it very still above its head. And opens its mouth. Oh. And he swallows it. The whole snake. Then you see the Twinga lays down on its belly. And it starts to wiggle, slithering like a snake. And as it approaches the stairs, the vines open, and the Twinga is able to ascend to the next level. I don't know if we would have ever figured that out by ourselves. No, I, I don't think so no? either. I'm, I'm a frog, not a snake. I don't know about this one, guys. Well, everyone, gently boop your snake. I will find a snake and go. Boop, boop, boop. And you see the snake stops moving and just kind of lays there looking at you. Okay, I guess we're doing this. <laughs> and okay, so after you, after you eat your snake, Rohan, uh, you start to feel kind of funny. It's like a tingly sensation. It starts... In, in your sternum it starts to kind of go out through the rest of your body and you get the sensation you need to lay down I will do so upon my belly and you lay on your belly and you can't help it your hips start to wiggle and you slither slither <laughs> <laughs> among the snakes you slither to the stairs <laughs> at which point uh, you would be able to ascend. Yes. This, this is a little silly, and I'm kind of tired of this. But whatever I do, and then he boops the snake and does the same thing. And uh, Jeff will provide some uh, thematic uh, accom musical accompaniment just with his newfound loot like. <laughs> so again, um, Gib, your chest starts to feel kind of tingly. It's a sensation that you need to lay down. You start slither, slither. <laughs> slither. And then he goes... Up the stairs, off he goes. <laughs> and I'm just standing on the landing. Well, Jeff, he will, he will boop the snakes, but he will do artistically like, ah. of course. And it, and it goes limp and kind of slack and looks at you. <laughs> to sleep now, I must digest you, little snake. My head. Yes. <laughs> I shall consume this little bit, hello. <laughs> and then uh, start to feel kind of weird, lay down, and then you also get the irresistible urge to slither and wiggle your way up the steps. A slither? As all of you reach the, the pinnacle of the steps. You find yourself at the peak of the ziggurat. Uh, in here is a simple rectangular structure of brick. The outside walls are decorated with strange symbols and snakes. And before we progress, I need to ask, you happen to be evil aligned creatures, do you? Okay, good, because you would have instantly died. Uh, so you... 
Oh, man. Uh, so, so, uh, about that. You're not an evil aligned creature. <laughs> that was also lying. You don't instantly die. You get to make a save. Uh, <laughs> uh, where is it? Evil aligned creatures. Save a con save. Okay. Is a pass, so you will take half damage. So half of thirty eight. Okay. As uh, upon reaching the pinnacle of the steps, there is a just this overwhelming sense of burning coming from within your stomach, and you can feel it literally wiggling its way back up to your throat and then uh, as you begin to gag and retch you vomit out the snake that you had consumed earlier the other two do not have the same experience only rohan no idea it's fine. We're here now, aren't we? Ooh, that... Mm. Ah. So... What now? Do you need some water, Rohan? Wouldn't mind it. That... Yeah, yeah. Mm. Uh, um. <sighs> enters the temple proper and he will say loud enough to be heard but not too loud enough to be obnoxious oh wise one of Oralunga have come for guidance inside the shrine is just it's a very plain temple room um it, it's dusty and barren but you swear you can detect a hint of incense. Incense. Incense burns. Perhaps if we enacted a ritual of some sort, burning that incense, something would happen? What do you believe, folks? Well, I know you've been right so far about everything. Let's try it. Well, he takes uh, his tinderbox, he gets next to the incense, which no. I, I guess is on There is no of... incense. You can smell it, oh. but there is literally nothing in the room. In which case, do we have incense or some combustible? We have torches. We have torches. I'll try, like, Tapping the flower and the feather together. Maybe that does something. Okay, you'll see. Remember, we were snakes a moment ago. So I, I had assumed that upon reaching the pinnacle, we would have dropped our flower and our feathers. No. So let's say after finding the shrine empty, we go, we make sure we grab our flowers, and when we enter a second time, uh, we find instead... The hanging lamps now illuminate the room. Incense burners filled with exotic scents and curling smoke linger around the air. There are blooming flowers that line the plastered walls, and singing birds flit from plant to plant. And, as you enter the chamber, a bright light flashes before you as an immense snake with iridescent scales rests on a heap of cushions opposite the doorway. It slowly rises to a height of about seven feet tall, staring directly into your eyes as it moves. Its face is remarkably human-like, and its tongue flicks before it speaks. I am Saja in Baza. What do you seek in this ancient place? Speak true. For I know what is in your hearts. And, uh, Candle, 
before you can reply, I hate to do it to you, buddy, but you you did you tell me you are evilly aligned. Uh, as you behold such an, a wonderful presence, you again feel that burning take root inside your chest. Can you make me another con save, please? Probably not. We'll see. Seventeen. Okay. okay, so it's a pass. You will again take half of thirty-five. As uh, and this is psychic damage. I don't know if that's relevant, but you you just can't comprehend what what's in front of you. Uh, so yeah, Rohan's just gonna start hacking again, and he'll just go down to one knee, eyes closed, and just quote-unquote reverence. I shall speak true to you. Uh, did you type out the name in the chat of the, of the, the creature? Saja Inbaza. Wise guardian Saja Inbaza, we have come here because of a curse, a worldly curse. You have heard of it, I am certain. The death curse. I know many things. Yes. It has been made into place, or so we believe, by the Archlich Sererai. And we, humble as we are, wish to put a stop to it. But we do not know where to go. Jungle is vast, and one of our members decomposing as time goes on. If we go aimlessly in the jungle, we will never make it in time, and he will perish in our arms. So I implore you, do you know where to find the leech and his tomb, his repository of some sorts? I do. I walked to the earth when the lich first came to Chult. I've seen his war against Omu and its guardians, and I know it is there where you would find his tomb. I can reveal to you the city Omu hidden within the jungle, but if I do this, you must promise me that you will return the favor do something for me. Yes. Anything you ask, I will do. Deep in Omu, there is a creature, once human, now disgusting, despicable Wan Ti. His name is Rasni, and him, his followers, scheme to end the world. They wish to feed all life to Dendar, the world serpent. I have seen the omens. The gods tell me that it is in Omu where Naga and Rasni have made their lair. If I show you where Omu is. If I show you where Asarak has laid his tomb, and while there, you must deal with Rasni. Alright, that sounds like a good deal to me. More than doable. <clears throat> There is one more thing. I remember when Rasni first uh, rose against the citizens of Omu. I remember how the Cholten people of the time showed him mercy. When he was a man, he was a warlord. And in his defeat, they cast him out in exile. Where he met with the Wan Ti and now has become something far worse. 
if you see Rasni, his fate is to die. He cannot be allowed to live, for he poses too great an evil. Promise me you will end the life of the Wan T Rasni, and I will tell you how to reach Omu. I promise. I, I have no crimes about killing him. Either. Shall do what is required. Understand that he had his second chance, unfortunately wasted it. His time has come. We will speaking proceed. Of, speaking of evil, do, do you happen to know anything about this hag lady, but none of true or whatever the heck her name was? That is not that creature's name. She has many pseudonyms that she uses, but even I am not able to deal with her, or I would have cast that blight out of Chult centuries ago. Stay clear of Nanny Poo Poo. Enter into no pact or agreement with her, or it will only lead to your doom. Well, thanks for telling me that now. And it gestures to the mark on his arm. <laughs> oh, you poor child. If the entire clan was decimated, we are in his only family now. If you are successful in defeating Rasni, return to me. I will join you in your fight against Nanny Poo Poo. And we can cleanse we Chult of two great evils. Shall proceed. Have our word. We will go to Omu. We will rid this world of Rasni. And hopefully, a Serax scheme. Then we will come back stronger than before for us to get rid Nanny Poo Poo and her schemes. Then we are agreed. You will find the city of Omu between the peaks of flame and the valley of Loth Honor. It is far from here. I wish you the best. And we wish you plentiful bounties. If you will allow me, I know you have watered this place. Against magic. I would like to gift your land with bountifulness. He it just smiled at you. You may give me any gift. It is not needed. Understandable. I shall refrain. But, thank you profusely. Perhaps today you have saved a life, or a friend. And as you say this, uh, the lights begin to dim. The, the, the Naga, she begins to become more translucent. And uh, in a, a manner of seconds, you're staring at the end again. Rohan, you're feeling all right. Can you descend the stairs with us? <clears throat> yes, I'll be fine. And you see, he's just propping himself up on his dragon arms right now. I'll be fine. If you need a shoulder, just ask. Perhaps later. <sighs> So, so, as you descend from uh, Oralunga, you see that the vines, are, they part on both sides. You're allowed to, to descend without problem. There's no more... The vines are almost completely gone. The, the spray is completely intact. The snakes have retreated. Uh, you're able to just walk to the bottom and exit. As they walk down, Jeff will nod to the Chewinga, who 
saved us. Because we, have, we would have never figured out that third thing by ourselves. He says, Chewinga was blessing this land. I will not forget you. It grabs its little mask and gives a like a little tipping bow. It turns around and runs off into the woods. And I think there is where we end today. <laughs> uh, you guys, you are all welcome to take a rest if you would like. Um, and I mean, we're in the jungle. We're, you know, nothing really uh, of note at the moment. So go ahead, take a rest and level up to level seven because finding the location of the death curse is another milestone that is important in order to continue on our journey and uh if you enjoyed the stream make sure you come back thank you all for watching so so very much also thank you all that have joined us today and followed subscribed donated and cheered uh really important to help keep things going thank you again so very much and if you want to see more check us out on youtube uh that's where all of our videos get uploaded where you can see all of our campaigns past and present and if you want to get in the game yourself, join us in the Discord. Where it's games going on all the time, and I'm sure you can uh, get in and get to play some D&D yourself. Uh, I'm Daddy Warbucks, and I will see you next time.